I tried to spend the max budget allowance of $1,000 a day on my Etsy ads. In this video, I'm going to be explaining why I do this and the psychology behind why I want to show Etsy that I'm willing to spend the max budget. If you stay till the end, if you stay till the end, I'm going to go over all of the do's and do nots of Etsy PPC, Etsy pay per click, all of my secret sauce tips of how I personally run my ads. I'm not going to leave any stone unturned in this video. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Welcome back guys, my name is Hannah Gardner. If you're new to the channel, I pe peach. I teach people how to build brands on Etsy and Shopify, but a lot of other entrepreneurial stuff on this channel as well. I'm actually gonna be starting a podcast soon where I interview other serial entrepreneurs like myself that probably have even crazier stories than mine. So if you wanna check that out, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I put out content regularly. So why do I personally spend the max budget allowance and what are the major keys, do's and don'ts and my secret, not really secret, strategy of how I personally run my ads that has proven me to write time and time again and works basically because all of my brands that I've ever launched on Etsy are always set to the max budget allowance. As you know, inside of Etsy, you can set an Etsy marketing budget. So you come into your Etsy ads and you can set a budget, right? And sometimes when you're a newer account, a thousand dollars a day isn't even an option. They cap you at $25 a day. Once you show Etsy that you're willing to spend at $25 a day, we'll get pushed to $50 a day and then maybe $100 a day. But the goal is to get to $1,000 a day. Now, even though my ads are set to $1,000 a day, it does not spend $1,000 a day. Why is that? This is called Etsy PPC. PPC stands for pay per click. So it means that I'm only paying for the ad if someone actually clicks on my listing. So the reason why it doesn't spend $1,000 a day is because <laughs> people aren't clicking on $1,000 worth of my listings. Now, how do you increase that so it actually spends more? Do that by having more listings, having broader search terms so you can rank on more search pages for higher search volume keywords. You do that by having super amazing products and product photography, right? There's all these things that you're constantly striving for as a business owner and all of those things help you increase the amount that Etsy is going to spend. Now, different niches are going to spend your budget differently. If you're somebody that has 10,000 listings, it might spend a thousand dollars a day, right? If you're someone like me, that's in hovering between the hundred to 300 listing range, right? It's still not spending the max budget allowance. For instance, if I look at this month, which is April 1st through the 5th, it only has spent $461. So it hasn't spent that much money instead of you know, say $5,000 because it's on the fifth day. Two main reasons of why it's always my goal to get to the max budget allowance as fast as possible. So the first reason is because when you set your budget to the max budget allowance, even though it's not going to spend it, what you're telling Etsy is that you're willing to spend it, right? So sometimes people will set their budget to like a hundred dollars and they'll see, oh, well, it doesn't even spend the hundred dollars. So why would I raise it? Right? Well, the reason why you, I raise it is because you're telling Etsy that you're willing to spend up to a thousand dollars, right? So if I am a seller that essentially is spending, saying that I'm willing to spend a thousand dollars and I'm competing against somebody against another seller that is competing for the same keyword to get that click that has a comparable listing with a comparable product that has the same value proposition. So same quality, maybe a similar price, right? Who do you think Etsy is going to favor? Are they going to favor the seller that's only willing to spend a hundred dollars a day on ads? Or are they going to favor the seller that's willing to spend a thousand dollars a day? So you have to think in terms of what would Etsy want? And if Etsy is a business, I can only imagine that they're going to favor the sellers that want to, or show that they're willing to spend more than their competitors, right? I'm willing to outbid my competitor that's only spending a hundred dollars a day, right? And so by doing this, you're already beating all of the people that 
don't want to spend or too afraid to increase their budget to the max budget allowance. So in turn, what does that do? That's gonna get you the click or at least the potential to get that click because you're gonna get that ad spot position over the guy that's only spending 100. Earning that click is gonna boost your listing SEO as a whole because it's gonna show that you're getting a lot of clicks to your listings. And again, you always wanna think what would Etsy want? <laughs> The second reason why I'm a huge proponent of going, hi, Bruno. Oh my gosh, say hi, Bruno. Hi, hi. <laughs> proponent. <laughs> the second reason I'm such a huge proponent of spending the max budget allowance is because what it does when you launch new listings, <laughs> When you go to launch new listings, what that does is it rips off that Band-Aid faster. When you go to publish a listing, if you wanna let it just get organic views or organic reach, you can do that. It's just gonna take a lot longer to collect the appropriate amount of data that you need for you to decide whether or not this listing is going to be a dead listing, whether it's gonna be an okay listing, or if it's gonna be a best-selling listing, right? So it's just gonna take that much longer to collect data. When you start spending money on your listings, you rip off the Band-Aid faster and tells you what's working and what's not working way faster than just trying to let go the organic route. And if you're in a niche, that is very competitive, this waiting, waiting around for Etsy to basically tell you if it's a good listing or not is going to take even longer when you're in a very saturated niche, which nowadays in e-commerce, a lot of niches are saturated. So it's not really an option to not spend money on paid ads. Any business usually has a marketing percentage budget built into their business model. And so if you're in the, the planning stage of your business, you wanna make sure that if your business is this pie chart, that you leave a significant amount of this pie for your marketing cost percentage. And this is normal. For Fortune 500 companies, when they go to market, 80% of their budget, in some cases, is going to marketing. And that is normal. And the theory is, is that when you're a new store, right, this, this marketing cost percentage is obviously a lot larger because you have no reviews, you have no sales history, you're not indexed in any of the search pages, right? So it's a bit more expensive to go to market, but then over time, as you get five-star reviews, as you get you know people vouching for you, you get photo reviews, you get your products start getting indexed, that marketing cost percentage should decrease. Your cost to an acquire a customer should then become cheaper. If you do the proper market research and you're setting up your product listings competitively and for the best case scenario, right? You should have no worry that your marketing cost percentage won't decrease over time if you know that you're actually building competitive products. And I have a lot of videos on this and I try to rail this home as much as I can about doing proper competitive research in my other videos, which I can link some at in the top of this video and also in the description of some other videos where I'm showing you how I analyze the market or analyze competition because that is really gonna make or break you know, if your products are gonna win or not in a marketplace. So now let's move into some of my more secret sauce, not really secret, but just my pro tips on do's and don'ts with your Etsy ads. We're the main do nots when it comes to running Etsy ads. Number one, do not run Etsy ads on unoptimized listings. So if your product photography is not competitive compared to your competition, compared to the people that are at the top, if you have no keywords, you didn't do any proper keyword research, if your product itself is not comparable as far as perceived value for what you're paying in comparison to your competition, right? Then do not run, do not waste money on your ads because then again, you're gonna spend money on your listings that do not convert. Again, I have more videos on doing listing optimization in my channel so you can check out those videos for guidance. Number two, when you're running your Etsy ads, do not get emotional. You cannot have emotional connection with spending money for your business. You have have to think of it as a business investment. So the worst thing that you can do is set your budget, whether it's $5 a day or a dollar a day. What people do sometimes is they'll set a budget and then they'll let it run for four days and then they'll see that it spent $20 and that it made them zero sales and they get emotional and then immediately turn it off. You do this when you get emotional and you see my ads generated me $0 after four days and you cut your ads out. This 
really does not give you any accurate data on what's working or what's not. It takes weeks, if not months, for Etsy to decide where your listing belongs. So you need to let your listings spend money to see what your best sellers are, what listings are getting the most clicks, what photography is getting you the highest CTR, click through rate, right? Business is an entire engine. Your Etsy ads is one part of that engine. And inside that engine, the goal is to constantly be tweaking the dials and fine tuning your ads so that you're optimizing this one part of your engine for the max profitability. And like I said, when you first start, it might not be profitable at all, actually. It might be pretty negative. But spending that money to collect that data is totally necessary to be able to begin tweaking the dials. And like I mentioned before, if you turn off your ads after four days, you can't tweak the dials because you don't know what dials to be tweaking because you haven't collected enough data to see what's working and what's not working. You're prohibiting yourself from faster growth. Number three, do not spend money on listings where the inventory went out of stock. You have variation options and most of them in, are in stock, that's fine. But if the main sellers in that listing go out of stock, I would recommend turning it off because again, you're gonna be wasting money on your Etsy PPC. I talk about enough data. I don't just mean 100 views to your listing. It needs thousands of views to be able to accurately depict what's working and what's not working. Because out of every 100 views, if that turns into one sale, especially on a store that has no reviews, no testimonial, no social proof, right? A 1% conversion rate is actually pretty decent. On number four, another big do not is do not be looking at your ads multiple times a day. I honestly wouldn't even look at your ads every single day because again, it takes time for your ads to optimize. And when you set your budget for the first time, if you have a hundred listings, it might not even spend on some of your listings. You're, it might not spend anything at all. And that is completely normal. If your budget's really low, it's only going to pick a few listings to spend on to start with, right? And as you increase your budget, the idea is that hopefully more of your budget is allocated to other listings. And if your budget's really low, say only $5, right? And you're spending a dollar per click or 60 cents per click. You're not really setting yourself up to get a lot of clicks to collect a lot of data for that day. Now, like I said before, all of these are normal. It's very normal to turn on your ads and not all of your ads start spending money. So don't freak out or think something's wrong. That, that is just part of it, right? Because remember, you're only paying when someone clicks on your ad. Now let's move into the do's. So I would check my ads about once a week. I would recommend checking your ads about once a week. So setting a budget, setting something is better than nothing. In the beginning, set it to something that you're comfortable with, even if it's only $5 a day. Something is better than nothing, but the goal in mind is to get to the max budget allowance and be profitable with your max budget allowance. Now, as far as what ads to turn on or turn off, when to turn off an ad for a particular listing, there are three main KPIs that I look for that are triggering events that tell me this listing is not making me any money. I'm actually wasting money on this listing. And this is where I'm talking about tweaking the dials. First thing that I'm looking for when I'm analyzing all of my listings in my Etsy PPC is has it spent my threshold? Has this listing spent enough, an uncomfortable amount of money with one, not having any add to carts, having zero organic sales, or zero return on ad spend. And I turn off the listings that don't have any of these three things. The first thing is zero add to cart. So sometimes your listing will say that you have a zero return on ad spend. So you have zero return on this ad, but for whatever reason you go to look at the listing and it will say, oh, this listing has 10 add to carts or this listing has 20 add to carts. In that case, especially if I'm, it's a new listing, I'm not gonna turn off the ad because obviously I'm getting add to carts and something's working and we're gonna hope that this is gonna turn into sales. So I'll leave the ad on. The next thing, obviously I kind of give it away is ROAS. I look for return on ad spend. So am I actually seeing a return on the ad spend? Return on ad spend means if I put a dollar and I got two dollars back, I have a 2x return on ad spend, which is pretty good. So if the listing is new and I'm already getting ROAS, then I'm actually going to leave it on. And finally, sometimes my ROAS will still say zero, but when I go to look and check the organic stat, the listing actually 
is making me sales. So making organic sales, but for whatever reason, my ads are saying that I have zero return on ad spend, especially if the listing's new and it's making organic sales, I definitely don't wanna turn it off. The listings that I do turn off are listings that historically have made me no organic sales, have zero ad to carts and zero return on ad spend, and <laughs> listings that have spent a threshold of amount of money that is pretty much like, okay, now I'm, I'm wasting money. Different niches will have different thresholds and a threshold basically just means what are you comfortable investing in this listing before you're turning it off. So for me, I sell pretty high ticket items. I'm okay with spending $60 or investing $60 in a listing to then discover that it's a dead listing, right? Now, if your items are priced cheaper, right? It might not be $60, it might be $20. But whatever that threshold number is, I would say that you want to get a couple of thousands of views on that listing for it to be enough data to say, okay, you know, this listing has gotten 5,000 views and historically nothing's happening. Zero ad to carts, no organic sales, no return on ad spends, and I spent my threshold. Okay, I'm gonna turn that listing off and I'm gonna focus on launching new listings or maybe updating that listing and then running it again to see if these changes help the listing. And I have a lot more videos in my channel on basically how to revamp dead listings if you find that you have dead listings. So I'll make sure that I'll link that above this screen. My next do is at the end of each month, it's in your best interest to calculate your marketing cost percentage. So how do you do that? You're comparing what your ad spent for the month in comparison to your top line sales. So a lot of times people like to look at my ad spent X, but the ads generated me Y. And I don't recommend you actually look at this. I recommend comparing what your ad spent compared to your top line sales, because we wanna look at our business as a from a bird's eye view, and we wanna see what that marketing cost percentage is at the end of the month on my profit and loss statement from a broad view, right? And the goal is to decrease that marketing cost percentage over time. So I don't recommend you look at what this ad generated me. I want you to compare it, or what I do, is I compare it to my top line sales. And every month I'm working towards getting that percentage, a smaller and smaller piece of that pie to increase the net profit piece of the pie. And finally, the last thing that I do to tweak the dials even further, I actually go into the listings that I'm spending money on and I go to what the, the search terms that buyers search for. So now inside of your Etsy PPC, you have the option to actually turn off keywords that are historically wasting your money. So in there, I look for any anomaly words that you see that people are searching for, for whatever reason, I get the click for that search term, I can actually go ahead and turn off those words if they're just like anomaly words that don't match my product at all. That means that for whatever reason, I'm getting the click for that word, but it's just wasting my money and that word actually has nothing to do with my product. And this happens from time to time, but turning off words that historically are not turning into sales you know, you can go ahead and turn those words off. Now, obviously, if the word is a keyword product fit, even though it says that you get a lot of clicks, but maybe no purchases, if it's an obvious keyword product fit, I'm not gonna turn it off. I'm gonna keep <laughs> let it keep running, right? But what I'm looking for here specifically is just straight up anomaly words where listen, when I look up that word and I put it into the Etsy search bar, that word literally has nothing to do with the product that for whatever reason I got the click for. Guys, I hope you got some value out of this video. That concludes all of my do's and my do nots. So hopefully you got some value out of this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.